Connecting to the Brotherhood database. Connection complete. Detonator activated. Stand by for retinal scan. Identity confirmed. Detonation cancelled. Have a nice day. Welcome, recruits. Welcome to the last job you'll ever have. My name is Gabriel. I'm head of chapter... I'm head of a Brotherhood chapter. Used to be the head of the Brotherhood chapter, Alpha One. Not that I'm bitter, no. I love doing the work that a pamphlet could do. Telling noobs that monsters are dangerous. But hey, it's work. Of any kind. Like I haven't had since Vancouver. All right, let's get this over with. Here's what you can expect from a career with the Brotherhood. Get any romantic illusions out of your head right now. Most hunters, and by most hunters I mean you, will die in combat. It's our job. We are frontline troops in the war on horror. Tasked by heaven to patrol the mortal coil, we track and eliminate high-profile supernatural targets. If it goes bump in the night, we bump it off. You've heard of Hell's Angels. Well, we're... Uh, heaven's demons. Except that we're not demons. We're humans. Well, most of us are. Oh, well, well, some of us are. I... I think. Huh. Pretty sure Ned's human. Alright. To understand just what you'll be doing, you'll need to know how the Brotherhood began. In the beginning, there was no Brotherhood. It was assumed that Heaven wouldn't need permanent troops on the material plane. That need quickly became apparent during the events of First Samuel. During the reign of King Saul, the Philistines mustered an army between Soko and Azika with the intent of wiping out Israel. And the Philistines had with them something that hadn't been seen since the First War. Howdy, midgets! I'm Goliath, champion of the Philistines. I defy Saul and his puny god. Tell you what, choose one of you guys to come face me, huh? I understood this was gonna be catered? So, it was pretty obvious that Goliath wasn't human. Dude was about nine feet tall, carried about 600 pounds of armor. Best guess is he was half demon, which really surprised the Israelites, of course, because it totally violated the Treaty of Acheron. One of those tea cakes? The treaty signed after the first war basically forbade any direct intervention on the material plane. The plan was this would free man to determine his own fate. But Satan found a loophole. Yeah, that guy's a dick. Good card player, though. Satan figured out, as long as the demons weren't working with the direct approval of hell, he could sneak them in ones and twos and they could wreak all sorts of havoc. Yep, one of y'all come face me. If he kills me, huh, we'll be your slaves. If I kill him, it's gonna be ours. Woo! <laughs> so you can imagine how shocked the Hebrews were when only eight books after Genesis, they're staring down a bona fide half demon. But there was one who dared answer Goliath's challenge. Who is this pagan Philistine that defies the armies of the living God? So, while we're all reviewing the treaty to see how this could have happened, this mortal man, this boy, 
answers the call. I accept your challenge, Goliath. He was David, son of Jesse, who would one day be king. And we all set up and take notice. This could be the answer. This could be how we fight back. Seriously, what did the guy think was going to happen? What, what, what was he expecting? I mean, who takes on a giant with a sling? That's straight out of the adventures of Captain Dip. Yeah, that was pretty f***ing embarrassing. Oh, like you don't swear? I mean, come on. Dude's nine feet tall, weighs a thousand pounds. A f***ing sling? That's just dumb. Goliath seriously did them a favor. Any more tea cakes? But, but, David wasn't officially a part of the Hebrew army, so he didn't qualify for single combat. So, there was still a chance we could get the nation of Israel out of this mess. We didn't want a repeat of David's mentally challenged bravery, so we did what we should have done a long time ago. We hired a ringer. A dimensional traveler. What do, what do you call them? Hoppers? Hop what? Water. So the boys upstairs finally figure out, if they can recruit supernats to fight for them, then so can we! Ding, ding, ding! You count down from ten! By the time my man hits one, your time is done! You are- Ten! Hey, who's this Jew talking to me? Nine? I'm the man what's gonna corpse you up real good. Eight? Hey, I'm gonna rip your skull. Seven? Better hurry, my boys. It Six? Five? Bear me! Four? Oh, yeah. Three? Two? One. That's when we started the Brotherhood. And the Jews have been conflict-free ever since. In the next section, we'll take a look at the pieces that make up the Brotherhood, its chapters. This is the org chart, key to understanding the intricacies of internal Brotherhood affairs, and who better to explain the org chart than a member of Chapter Alpha One, the Brotherhood's top chapter. You called me out of the Oregon Vortex for this? Is the training of new recruits suddenly not a priority? A chapter title has two parts, a letter and a number. The letter indicates the threat level you're qualified to handle. The alphas, such as I, handle the greatest threats, spawning demons, dead gods, gyms, etc. Lower level groups, such as omegas, are qualified to handle the warehouse. You have told them about the warehouse. It's on my itinerary. Oh, I see. No surprises there. What's that supposed to mean? The numbers denote jurisdiction. A 1 has total worldwide access. A 15 would be assigned to a region of no spiritual activity whatsoever. As an example, let's take a random chapter, say, Omega 15. Yes, random. An Omega 15 would operate out of a total backwater, a supernatural dead zone, where it couldn't do any damage. Which isn't to say that that dead zone couldn't suddenly become active. In which case, you call in a senior team to handle the situation. The long and short of it, <laughs> you're an Omega. You don't want to be. Most of you will die. Live long enough and you'll advance. Screw up big enough, though, and it's back to Omega. That was worth my time.
Your chapter title's also a pretty good indicator of how titanic a frigid you are. So you've been given command of your own chapter. Who should you recruit? Here, with more information, is Anti-Tank Sally. <clears throat> we all want to battle the powers of darkness and assure the future of the human race. Well, it's never been easier. Now you can form your own demon hunting chapter. An effective chapter balances well-skilled agents from a variety of disciplines, such as gunslinger, warmonger, tracker, mystic, demon fodder, techno wizard, super spy, silent stalker, telekinetic, pyrokinetic, lactokinetic, healer, TV VCR repair, Marksman, medium, assassin, libertarian, and many, many more. As chapter leader, you get to customize your own leadership style. You could specialize in tactics and strategy or wanton violence. Don't hesitate, contact your recruitment advisor today. Hunters are split on the idea of recruiting supernaturals into the ranks. The decision is yours. But first, Jim. Demo tape. Some testimonials from supernatural hunters I've personally worked with. Cypher? Touching memories. If I hadn't been captured by the Brotherhood, I'd have been staked or sun-dried a long time ago. I'd fallen in with a bad crowd, typical goth Drax, all black capes and fake accents. But thanks to the Brotherhood and my daily dose of vitamin V, I've learned I control the vampirism. It doesn't control me. Evil isn't a destiny, it's a choice. The wrong choice. Thanks, Brotherhood. <laughs> Figured I'd be spending the rest of my life behind the bars of a kennel. When I was bitten on that hunt, I thought my time with the Brotherhood was over. Couldn't have been more wrong. Brotherhood helped me fight the infection, stay on active duty. I could have become an animal. Instead, I'm a man. Thanks, Brotherhood. Some of you may be wondering why, with such a high mortality rate, anyone would want to join the Brotherhood. You just saw three good reasons. It's never too late to fight for the good guys. You beautiful son of a birch. <sighs> Alright, now it's time to meet the most Amazingly boring, yet completely essential member of your team. When activated, this guy will be your link to the Brotherhood database, the central repository for over 40 centuries of Brotherhood intelligence. Your cipher is built on a titanium skeleton, driven by an electroactive, polymer-based synthetic musculature. 
on a full charge, your cipher can operate for up to three days and can be recharged from any standard outlet. Ha, ah, it's warm. Here for more on your cipher's technical properties is yet another Alpha One hair doctor. As an agent, your cipher is very well protected. The words and runes inscribed on the chassis Puncture proof, self healing, synthetic skin, and strategic armoring make your cipher virtually immune to bladed weapons, minor destructive magics, and small arms fire! A demonstration! As I said, small arms fire. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that guy just weirds me out. Your cipher's most important feature is its goggles. How, how, how did you get here? I ran. Aside from providing full spectrum imaging, the goggles are actually your cipher's brain. Every bit of knowledge, memory, and personality your cipher exhibits is stored in here. When your cipher is killed, recover the goggles. They can be used to reinstall your cipher in a new chassis. They also hold over 100 hours of music. Recently, due to cost-cutting measures, the Cypherworks have outsourced some manufacturing to a satellite plant in Oaxaca. I've heard that quality control's been an issue ever since. Oh. Indeed, I've heard that some ciphers have been displaying odd personality quirks and behaviors. This is an absolute fabrication. This is as true as the rumors it is an evil cipher, something in the cipher collective. Nick Vara? See, Hefe, it's for that. All right, um. You have your team, now it's time to equip it. We're standing in the warehouse, the location of which is the Brotherhood's greatest secret. Not even I know where I am right now. But all you need to know is this place has what you need. Any item for any hunt is here in any quantity. The warehouse wares are, quite literally, infinite. I can't tell you where I am, but I can tell you how to get here. Just take a door. The Brotherhood has thousands of doors stashed throughout the world. Each one leads to the warehouse, so don't overreact when you run out of supplies in the field. The door to the warehouse is usually nearby. Assuming you can find one. You alphas are everywhere today. Guilty. Just grabbing some bolt cutters for Ricky Bob. Mind if I, uh... No. Please. Usurp what duties I have left. Right. So, every cipher's got the location of every door programmed into that little brain of his. So, you'd be pretty well humped if he were to snuff it. Right? Not necessarily. There are plenty of other ways of finding the warehouse. Certain veterans have their own methods of, uh... Sniffing it out. <laughs> It's a pun, you see? Because yeah. <laughs> I can, you know, sniff it out, <laughs> scent-wise. I know. Whiff my nose. I'm leaving. Ta. You know your history. You have your team. You're fully armed and equipped. Are you ready for the field? Christ, no. Not even close. Which brings us to our next topic. We'll be looking in on the progress of an actual group of new recruits. Arcadian, you were the first to receive them. A vampire in the area. What they are... Arcadian, Mystical Arts and Chapter Leader. Armageddon, Melee Combat. Sparky, Engineering, Weaponry, and Tactics. 
and Ned from accounting, cannon fodder. Cannon what? There are three phases to your training. The first, tabletop field scenario simulations. You don't spot the vampire. Lock and load my MP4. Armageddon. I set up a defensive perimeter. I craft a spell circle and cast Detect Undead. Your readings grow intense. I track the drag, but at a distance. You spot the vampire. I, I charge! Attack! No, wait! Spotted eagle strike! Yeah! He slams his fist through your skull. The vampire just killed you. <laughs> Dumbass. The second phase. Physical conditioning and combat training. Like so! Huh! Yes. Now, like so. Hi. Now, like so. Strike the strike! Oh. Yeah. Huh? The vampire just killed you. Dumbass. The third stage of your training takes place in the field under surveillance of a Brotherhood trainer. I don't see the track. This is a live hunt. I'll define his location. I'm gonna set up a perimeter. The commander says he's nearby. <laughs> hey guys! He's over there! What is he? Go! No, wait! Vampire just killed you. Dumb bash. It's dumbass. Dumbass. By now, you should have a sense of what awaits you in the field. But there is another supernatural danger that no amount of training can prepare you for. I'm not talking about a specific monster. I'm talking about our direct counterparts, the Order of the Infernal Scepter. Those guys are holes. Who gave him sugar? They're Satan's answer to demon hunters, and they're constantly trying to infiltrate the Brotherhood. When we're lucky, we catch them. Like Missy here. Save me from the bad man! Don't be fooled. Deception and disguise are the Order's greatest tools. They could be right under your nose and you wouldn't even know it. I will Let's go! Greetings, recruits. I'm Ichabod, leader of Chapter Alpha One. I I Ichabod, uh, uh, before I go on, Gabriel, let me just say that we are all very impressed with what you've been doing with your reassignment. Kate, what are you Prison actually- Prison transfer. 
Some order agents have snuck into the base. Christ! We need to move Missy. Keep her away from them. Of course. Don't worry, recruits. The order is dangerous, but Alpha One is on top of things. You can leave now. Huh. By now you've probably realized just how dangerous the Brotherhood is. But, rest assured, it's very possible to stay alive. I owe my survival to a single piece of advice imparted to me by my mentor many long, weary years ago. He said to me, Gabriel, no matter what, be sure. Hello, future corpses. If you haven't heard of me, let me break the ice so you know whose hand it is making sock puppets with your esophagus. <laughs> Name's Hell. Sam Hell. I'm with the Order of the Infernal Scepter. Yeah, we're your nemesis. Um, nemesis. Nemesis. We kill you dead. And then we bring swords, more crawlies, guns into the world. To kill the people <laughs> you're supposed to be protecting. <laughs> Why am I telling you this? Oh, it's simple. So you'll know we're out here. So you'll know we're better equipped. We're better paid. All of their pills. We're better at recruiting. We pay mega big time for Brotherhood Moles. Just like a group. Operating right under your noses! And just so you f tarts don't think anything of anything that I'm saying and you don't listen to me, well, we're gonna be seeing you real soon! <laughs> Kill you later! Tards? With a yak. That's the worst way to go. You keep that in mind, and you'll keep yourself alive. And that's that. Congratulations, recruit. You've learned all that we can teach you. Good luck. Godspeed. And welcome to the Brotherhood of the Celestial Torch.
think those noobs will last? No chance. Is that thing still on? Shit. Nope. Blood, death, and vengeance!